Dear children of God, the story of Samson is one filled with lessons that are as relevant today as they were in ancient times. Samson's birth was not like that of any other child. It was foretold by an angel of the Lord. His father Manoah came from the tribe of Dan, and his mother, initially barren, received the miraculous news from an angel while she was alone. This angelic encounter set Samson's life apart from the beginning, as his mother was given clear instructions that she was to raise her son as a Nazarite, a person set apart to God in a special way. This vow, as laid out in Numbers 62225, included specific guidelines. Those who took the Nazarite vow were not to drink wine or any strong drink, cut their hair, or touch anything unclean. Samson, however, was not just called to be a Nazarite for a temporary period, but for his entire life. Even while still in the womb, his mother had to follow the restrictions of the Nazarite vow. This shows how serious and holy the calling on Samson's life was. As Samson grew, God blessed him, and he developed into a powerful man, both physically and spiritually. God had destined Samson to lead Israel and deliver them from their enemies, the Philistines. For this purpose, God gave Samson extraordinary strength, and people often consider him the strongest man in the Bible. One of the most famous examples of Samson's strength is when he killed a lion with his bare hands. In another instance, he defeated an army of a thousand Philistines with nothing but the jawbone of a donkey. Truly, Samson was a man gifted by God for a special mission. Yet, despite all his strength and potential, Samson had a significant flaw. He had a weakness for women, particularly for a woman named Delilah. Samson's attraction to Delilah can be described as a form of fatal attraction. A fatal attraction is when someone becomes so obsessed or infatuated with another person or thing that it clouds their judgment. They lose the ability to think clearly, to reason soundly, or to make wise decisions. Samson's attraction to Delilah was this type of dangerous and consuming infatuation. Delilah, on the other hand, was not someone who had Samson's best interests at heart. She was a woman who was only concerned with herself and her own gain. The Philistine leaders came to her with an enticing offer. They would each give her 1,100 pieces of silver. If she could discover the secret of Samson's strength and help them defeat him. Without hesitation, Delilah accepted the offer and began plotting how to betray Samson. She started by getting close to him, gaining his trust and asking him where his great strength came from. Three times, Samson lied to her, each time giving her a false answer about how his strength could be taken away. First, he told her that if he were tied up with seven new bowstrings that had never been dried, he would become as weak as any other man. Delilah took the bait and tried it. She tied him up with the bowstrings, and when she cried out, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. He easily snapped the bowstrings, revealing that his strength remained intact. But Delilah did not give up. She accused Samson of making fun of her and lying to her, and she asked him again how he could be bound and made powerless. This time, Samson told her that if he were tied with new ropes that had never been used, he would become weak. Again, Delilah tried this, tying him up with fresh ropes. But when she called out, the Philistines are upon you. Samson snapped the ropes as if they were threads. Once more, his strength had not left him. After a third failed attempt, Delilah was frustrated. She pleaded with Samson, questioning his love for her because he had continued to deceive her. She played on his emotions, accusing him of not truly loving her since he refused to reveal the source of his strength. Delilah's persistence and manipulation wore Samson down, and finally, he told her the truth. He revealed that his strength came from his hair, which had never been cut, as he was dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. 
If his hair were shaved, his strength would leave him, and he would become like any other man. Delilah wasted no time. She called the Philistines and had them bring her the promised silver. Then, while Samson slept on her lap, she called a man to shave off the seven locks of his hair. With that, Samson's great strength left him. When she called out, the Philistines are upon you. Samson awoke and thought he could escape as before, but this time he was powerless. He did not realize that the Lord had departed from him. The Philistines seized Samson, gouged out his eyes, and took him to Gaza, where they bound him with bronze chains and made him grind grain in prison. This is a tragic moment in Samson's story, a powerful reminder that even the strongest among us have vulnerabilities, and when we allow ourselves to be led by our emotions or desires, we can be led into ruin. However, the story of Samson doesn't end in complete defeat. The Bible tells us that after his head was shaved, his hair began to grow back. This small detail carries a powerful message of God's grace and the possibility of restoration. Despite Samson's failure, God was not done with him. In his final act, Samson cried out to the Lord, asking for strength one last time to defeat the Philistines, and God granted his request. Samson's life ended in victory, even though he had stumbled along the way. What can we learn from Samson's story? One of the most important lessons is that we must not allow our emotions or desires to control us. Samson allowed his feelings for Delilah to cloud his judgment, and it led him into a trap. Today, many of us face similar challenges. We live in a world filled with temptations, and just like Samson, we can be easily led astray if we are not careful. There are still people like Delilah in the world those who are self-centered and will do whatever it takes to get what they want, even if it means hurting others. But we must not lose hope. There are also good, God-fearing people in the world. The key is to rely on God's wisdom and not be guided solely by our emotions. The Bible does not tell us to follow our feelings, because feelings can be deceptive. Our emotions change over time, but God's truth remains constant. If we make decisions based only on how we feel in the moment, we risk making choices that will lead to regret. Samson's story teaches us that even when we fall, God is still there. He offers us the opportunity for redemption and restoration, just as he did for Samson. It is never too late to turn back to God to ask for his forgiveness, and to realign our lives with his will. So, let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, acknowledging our weaknesses and asking for your strength. Help us to resist the temptations that surround us and to make choices based on your word, not our fleeting emotions. Guard our hearts and minds from lust and deception, and guide us in your truth. Restore us where we have fallen and help us to fulfill the purpose you have for our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. In Numbers 62225, God laid out the guidelines for those who would take the Nazarite vow. This vow was a sacred commitment to separate oneself to God for a designated period, and it included abstaining from wine and strong drink, avoiding contact with dead bodies, and never cutting one's hair. Samson, however, was not just any Nazarite. God chose him to be a Nazarite for life, dedicated to his service from birth until the day he died. Even while pregnant, Samson's mother was bound by these same rules, as the sanctity of the vow extended to her unborn child. As Samson grew, God's blessing was upon him and he was endowed with extraordinary strength, destined to deliver Israel from the hands of their enemies, the Philistines. Samson was a man of immense potential, but he was also flawed. While he is remembered as the strongest man in the Bible, 
His strength was accompanied by a significant weakness. His love for women, particularly Delilah. Samson's story is one of great triumphs, overshadowed by tragic downfalls, many of which were tied to his inability to resist temptation. Now, let's look closely at Delilah. Delilah was a cunning and self-serving woman, who was not truly interested in Samson's well-being, but in the wealth she could gain by betraying him. The Philistine rulers approached her, offering a substantial reward of 1,100 pieces of silver from each of them, if she could discover the secret to Samson's incredible strength. Without hesitation, Delilah agreed to deceive Samson for financial gain.